hat and his black and white cat Early in the morning, just as day is dawning He picks up all the post bags in his van Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Everybody knows his bright red van All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock Bring letters through your door <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Everybody knows his bright red fan All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them Maybe you can never be sure there'll be no ring Letters through your door Letters through your door <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat And his black and white cat Early in the morning Just as day is dawning He picks up all the post bags in his van Postman Pat Postman Pat on the run. Now then, said Pat one Thursday morning, has my new uniform come yet? Pat had had his old uniform for a long, long time and it was very shabby. He had ordered a new one and he'd been waiting weeks and weeks for it to come. No, it hasn't, said Mrs Goggins, looking at the label on a parcel. But there are some new people for you at Lane Head. They're Mr and Mrs Bagginal, and they have a lot of letters and a large parcel. Oh, said Pat, I'll have to carry that parcel half a mile. The road stops long before it gets to Lane Head. They must have had a right time moving in, carrying the tables and beds and chairs and everything up there. I hope that parcel isn't too heavy. Oh, it's not too bad, said Mrs Goggins. Lane Head was near the end of Pat's round, so his bag was almost empty when he got there. It only had the post for Mr and Mrs Bagginal in it. He left the van at the end of the road, leaving Jess asleep in his basket. Then he set out to walk the rest of the way. As he climbed up the hilly field towards the house, he saw some white creatures in the far corner. He didn't take any notice of them until he was in the middle of the field, far away from any fence. Then he saw that the creatures were goats, and they were not tied up the way goats usually are. They came running to Pat. Hello then, Billy, said Pat to the first one. What friendly animals they are, he thought. Then he saw the billy goat put its head down so that its sharp horns pointed at him. It stamped its feet, then ran at Pat. 
Help! Pat shouted. Help! Pat ran as fast as he could with his bag swinging and banging on his legs and getting in his way. He ran for the fence, but before he got to it, he felt the goat butting him from behind. Ow! Ow! Help! Pat yelled. Then he was at the fence. He jumped over, but caught his trousers on the barbed wire and ripped a big hole in them. What a mess he was in. When he reached the cottage, Mrs. Bagginal came to the door with a smile and a good morning, postman. Her smile soon disappeared when she saw his torn trousers and he told her how it happened. Oh, my goodness, I'm sorry that happened, said Mrs. Bagginal. But you see, they aren't our goats at all. We're new here, and they've chased us too. We go the long way round now. Well, I haven't time to go the long way round, said Pat, so I'll have to see if I can cure them of chasing people. You can't go home like that, said Mrs. Bagginal. Let's see if we can patch you up. She took him inside and found a tin of safety pins in a drawer. Here we are now. We can patch you up with these. She pinned Pat's trousers together with safety pins all down the leg. Now you're not going back through that field, are you? She said when Pat had given her the parcel and letters. Oh, don't you worry, said Pat. I have an idea for teaching that billy goat a lesson. Pat walked to the middle of the field. He held his empty bag open and waited for the goat to charge at him. Come on, Billy. Come on, I'm ready for you this time, Pat said to the goat. The goat put its head down, pointed its horns at Pat and charged. Pat stood still, holding the bag open. When it was almost touching him, he quickly popped the bag over its head and pushed it down over its horns. The goat shook its head from side to side. It was puzzled. Why had everything gone dark and stuffy? Why couldn't it see anything? It bleated sadly. It shook and shook its head, but it could not shake the bag off. It tried to walk away from Pat, but it walked in a circle and fell over its own legs. Oh dear, it was in a muddle. Well now, have you learned your lesson? said Pat. Can I have my bag back yet? He pulled the bag off. The goat shook itself and glared at Pat. It lowered its head and charged again. Look out, Pat! But Pat was ready for it. He popped the bag over its head again. This time he left it on longer. The goat was getting quite dizzy, trying to shake it off. Pat took the bag off. All the time, the nanny goat was quietly eating the grass some distance away. She took no part in the game at all. The billy goat looked dizzily at Pat, but all the same it lowered its head and charged again. Three times for luck, said Pat, popping the bag over its head. He was getting very good at this, and the goat was getting worse and worse. Pat left the bag on a good long time until the goat was so muddled that it had to sit down. He took the bag off. The goat gave him a wobbly look. It got unsteadily to its feet and walked away. It stood with its back to Pat, pretending he wasn't there. Pat walked away watching the goat all the time. It took no notice of him. It nibbled at the grass and Pat walked back to his van. You missed a good show, said Pat to Jess. Pat the famous goat fighter. Jess had been dreaming about rabbits. He didn't think he'd missed anything. Pat called at the post office. He told Mrs. Goggins about the goats, and he showed her his torn trousers. You're in luck, said Mrs. Goggins, because your new uniform came after you left this morning. My goodness, that is lucky, said Pat. If it had come yesterday, I'd have had it on today, and it would have been torn instead of the old one. Pat took his new uniform home in its parcel and tried it on. It looked very smart so the day ended happily after all. I hope there's no post for Mr and Mrs Bagginal tomorrow, said Pat, but I think I'll take a spare empty bag with me, just in case I need it.